There are basically two schools of thought when it comes to the best on-screen battle that has ever been made. There are those who believe that the Battle of Helm's Deep from The Lord of the Rings The Two Towers is the best battle scene that has ever been produced. Then on the other hand, there are those who are wrong. Objectively speaking, the Battle of Helm's Deep is perfect when it comes to nearly all metrics, whether we are speaking artistic direction, narrative style, entertainment value, pacing, or just for pure cinematography. There is only one area where I have reason to complain when it comes to Helm's Deep, and that is the design of the the fortress itself in the Peter Jackson movies. So let's dive on in and I'll show you why. So for starters, I just want to clarify that Helm's Deep is not a castle. A lot of people really like to insist that it is, but it most certainly is not. Helm's Deep is a military fortress, styled after the Anglo-Saxon that Rohan is based on. Now obviously an Anglo-Saxon fort would not have huge thick stone walls, and the architectural style is also not similar. However, this is not a fortified personal home, which is what a castle is. Historically, castles would have been introduced to England by the Normans, who would start to build Mott and Bailey style castles all over the place, from which they could live securely and exert control over their lands. Helm's Deep is clearly utilized more like an Anglo-Saxon fortress would be. A small garrison would remain there and maintain it for when the king needed to utilize it defensively. And there are lots of problems with that. But for now, let's move on. So the first issue with this fortress is a plot issue, really. Typically speaking, Anglo-Saxon fortresses would be placed in a significant strategic location. That way, if someone wanted to invade a specific region or attack the capital, they would have to defeat the forces in the fortress or risk having a strong fortified force at their rear. Helm's Deep is not ideally positioned for that purpose. For one thing, looking at a map of Rohan, it's kind of out of the way and not really protecting anything but itself. You can make an argument that it is sort of between Edoras and Isengard, but I would say that that's a flimsy one for the following reasons. So starting off, when we see Helm's Deep on screen, we see a small fortress at the end of a long valley surrounded by mountains on three sides. This is a very defensible location, and therefore it makes perfect sense that this would be how they would design it if they wanted to make it an imposing defensible location, which is clearly the narrative they're going for. However, this is a fortress and not a castle. The king doesn't live here. All of his treasure isn't here. His family isn't here. This isn't the symbolic seat of his power. So if it doesn't defend the more important locations of their country, staying here is kind of pointless. So that's why the valley design is a really, really bad one. Historically speaking, if you had this exact situation, the most intelligent thing to do would be to lay siege to the place where the king and most of his soldiers were hiding, and then just go and raid and loot and conquer the rest of his lands with your vastly superior forces. And given that this fortress is at the end of a long, narrow valley, it would actually take a very small number of troops to effectively besiege them here, because they would just need to block the narrow passage between the mountains. So tactically speaking, there is really no no reason for the Urukai to attack. So now that I've got the story issue out of the way, let's actually move on to the actual mistakes in the fort's design, because that's really what I want to talk about here. For starters, it's at the base of a mountain, which I know is actually really common for medieval fantasy stories, but tactically and historically speaking, it makes very, very little sense. For one thing, putting it even halfway up the mountain makes it a hundred times more defensible, as this would make most siege engines totally ineffective against it. Another problem with being at the base of the mountain is that it makes you vulnerable to threats from above. This could be enemies scaling the mountain and attacking you or raining projectiles down on you, or simply as logistical issues like rock slides or heavy snowfall or even avalanches that could bury your entire fortress. It's just not a great place to put your fortress. And if it has to be on the ground, then it would still be better to have it away from the mountain, not built right into it. That way, you are infinitely less likely for rocks, snow, or debris to come down on top of you, killing or trapping everyone inside. Then the next issue we have is that the entire valley past Helm's Dyke, which is this small river followed by like an earthworks fortification. I think of it a lot like Office Dyke from uh, Mercia before the uh, Danish invasion of Saxon England. I, and I'm pretty sure that's where the influence comes from. But anyway, the whole valley past that should actually be the fortress itself. You have these steep imposing mountain walls around the whole valley with just a narrow opening in its mouth. Why not just wall off that opening and then use the river as a moat? And then you would have a very sizable defensive location that could likely house the entire population of Rohan in an emergency, or at least a very sizable chunk of it. It would also be much easier to defend than the fortress itself, because it would be nearly impossible to surround the defenders this way. So in summary, my issue here is that we have this naturally defensible valley 
that they chose to build a fortress in. And instead of utilizing the natural landscape defensively, they actually back themselves into a corner so that those same defenses can now actually be used against them to keep them bottled up in here. Next, I'll move on to the fortress itself. And we're gonna start with the Deeping Wall. That's this big long wall that run, runs from the keep, or the Hornburg, all the way to the mountains way over here. My first issue with this wall is that it does not need to exist. Now hear me out, I'm not saying it serves no purpose, I'm just saying that it's almost entirely useless. It doesn't even protect the keep. It starts alongside the keep and then runs perpendicular to it. If anything, the keep actually protects the outer wall in this. If you wanted this wall to serve even the basic function of protecting the keep, it would need to form a barrier between the outside of the fortress and the gate that leads into the keep. But it doesn't do that. If that design flaw wasn't bad enough, and enough reason to say that the wall shouldn't be there, how about this? There's nothing behind the wall. There's just a small open area with a stream running through it. There's no storage, no housing, no barracks, no stables, no blacksmith, no alehouse. There's nothing behind this wall. It makes sense for there to be not much infrastructure here, given that this is a military fort and not a castle or a town. But then why do we even have this wall here? It doesn't protect the keep, and it doesn't contain anything. It is literally only here so that you need more men to effectively defend the fortress as a whole. Just think about it. Since it serves no tactical advantage, what if the battle, instead of having the bulk of their forces down on this useless wall, they would have all of them up inside the Hornburg, which is far more defensible. The Uruks could have crashed against the Hornburg like water on rock for days, and never made any progress against the deadly overlapping fields of fire coming from the Elvish archers. Oh, and one more thing before we move away from the Deeping Wall. I will refer you to Grima Wormtongue's line regarding Helm's Deep. Helm's Deep has one weakness. Its outer wall is solid rock, but for a small column at its base. So now we have a wall that serves no tactical value, requires us to spread out our defenders, weakening the potential defense of the main keep. Oh yeah, and now it's also a convenient weak point that Saruman can blow up and kill most of the defenders, and then easily get through. It's almost as if the whole point of this wall was to weaken the fortress. Just for starters, you have running water here. Instead of putting a culvert into your wall and letting it run out the valley in a useless trickle, why don't you, I don't know, Build an underground passage for it into a defensive water-filled moat directly outside your wall. That way, instead of having one weakness in your 20-foot thick solid stone wall, you now have a 20-foot thick stone wall with a deep water-filled moat directly outside it, making it almost impossible for ladders or even siege towers to put people on top of your wall. Just a thought. So now I'm finally ready to move on to the Hornburg, the keep itself and unfortunately it only gets worse from here. So you remember that scene during the battle where Saruman's Uruks are making their way up the causeway with a sweet battering ram testudo? Super cool scene. You can see that the causeway is an amazing defensive fortification. There are overlapping fire lanes allowing the Uruks to be shot from all sides, the causeway is narrow, so you have soldiers falling off when the battering ram comes forward. It's so close to being great. But then, they get up to the top and there is a massive flaw. Where the hell is their drawbridge? The drawbridge is not some space age advanced technological marvel. It's a long plank that can be pulled up when you don't want people crossing a gap. If there was a drawbridge up here, the Uruks would be shit out of luck because there is no way they could get in. But there, there just isn't. They are able to walk right up to the front gate, which is where we run into our next problem. So we've now allowed the Uruks to walk right up the causeway to the gate. And this gate is a four to six inch thick wooden double door. That is a laughably bad way to try and keep someone with a battering ram out. For one thing, hell, if you knew that the enemy was on their way and this was all you had, go and get as much timber as you can and nail that bad boy shut. This was a common tactic in Anglo-Saxon times you would see inner fortifications made to doors with giant timbers holding them shut, and then beams would be built on those to support them. Here's a photo from The Last Kingdom to demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about. If nothing else, this is something that they could have easily done in the time that they had to prepare for this assault. And lore-wise, it makes no sense why they wouldn't. But that aside, the gate has a much more serious problem. For one thing, it's just a single door. There is no gatehouse here. There's no portcullis, much less two of them, which is what you would want. There are no murder holes, 
No inner arrow slits to allow defenders to shoot their attack attackers while they are trying to batter down the door, just a single door. We do get some battlements up on top that have doors to allow the defenders to open them to throw rocks or spears, or just for Peter Jackson cameos, but there are no machiculations. Even if your gatehouse has nothing else, it should have an overhanging defensive fortification on top that allows defenders to drop stuff on their attackers without being exposed to enemy fire. But for some reason, this fortress doesn't even have that. Moving on, I will briefly mention something that most people will have likely noticed. The crenellations on this fortress are woefully inadequate. Just take a look at this shot on screen right now and I think you will understand what I'm saying. Crenellations should be tall and wide enough for a full-grown man to stand behind them and be 100% safe from enemy projectiles. These, however, protect most men up to about dick height, which I guess might be enough for some, but for me, I would like to have it go at least to my neck. And that's if I'm being very generous. But back to the gates. Because the front gate is not the only problem. In fact, it is only the beginning of this problem. So remember how instead of a defensive gatehouse, we have one thin double door that can easily be reached from the outside because there is no drawbridge. Well, right inside, there is a narrow passage that leads up to the next ring of the fort, which sounds like a recipe for success, until we look how they chose to depict this. So let's break it down. Directly through these doors, we have a steep left turn, which goes around and up to the right. They got one thing right here, and it's that historically speaking, you did not want your gates to line up. And here they do not. The front gate is down here, and the second gate is way up here at a right angle to the front gate. And they even kept it narrow enough here so that a battering ram would be essentially impossible to use here because there wouldn't be enough room. So the attackers would have to try and take down the gate with axes or hammers or by setting it on fire. All of this while being destroyed by the defenders now on both sides of them up on the walls. Well, surprise, surprise, they didn't do any of this right. For starters, there's no gatehouse here. And what's even worse, there's not even a door! It's like when they were building the fortress, they were like, Oh, thousands of tons of stone to make those thick-ass walls and these tall-ass structures? No problem. Wait, what's that? You want three sheep for the timber we ordered? Oh, to hell with you. We'll just do one door. And at the time, I'm sure the King of Rohan thought he was being very savvy. But in the end, it makes the fortress a bit of a joke. Oh yeah, and remember how I said the whole thing about the defenders being able to piss pound the attackers from both sides of the walls? Yeah, well forget that too, because you can access the first wall from an open staircase near the front gate, and there is literally a walkway from the first wall to the top of the second wall. So even if they had a gate where they should, right up here, it wouldn't matter, because the attackers would be able to walk right into the upper ring anyway. So it would all be pointless in any case. It's almost as if the second ring serves no purpose at all, and could be removed entirely, and it would make literally no difference in the battle. Then finally we come to the Great Hall, which ends up serving as their last line of defense. Once again, we have a simple small room with a single thin wooden door protecting it from the outer courtyard, but this time with absolutely no way to shoot the people outside the door. I would normally be fine with this, because if this fortress was built properly with real gatehouses, a drawbridge, a deeping wall that actually defended the keep, and real defensive inner walls, nobody would ever get to the Great Hall. So this would be perfectly safe. But if you're just going to invite your enemies right to your front door, it's probably a good idea to make sure you have some way to deal with them once they arrive. Finally, we're going to do a lightning round to take care of all the final defensive flaws that we have going on here from a tactical standpoint. For starters, there is a sally port, which is a real historical thing. But unfortunately, this one is accessed directly next to the front gate. The only way to get out through it is by jumping a large gap onto the causeway. Sally ports were used as an escape route for besieged fortresses or as a way to sneak troops out to flank the enemy, or sometimes as a way to access fresh water, but that's not the case here. You would not want your sally port right next to your front gate. Next we have the glittering caves, which instead of being fortified houses, or at least having a fortified entrance, they're literally just caves where people can hide until the Uruks find them, probably within a few minutes of capturing the fortress, and do whatever Uruks do to women and children. My guess would be probably eating them. And lastly, we have this really tall tower here that instead of containing arrow slits or some other form of defensive ability that adds to the fortress, it literally just houses a very large horn that would require an industrial-sized bellows to blow it. So instead of building gatehouses or even putting gates on their openings, they built a horn tower. But at least they had a staircase suitable for shield surfing. 10 out of 10, best fortress ever.